She's half of corporate India's top corporate power couples. An educator at heart, she's been driving the social initiatives at the Dhirubhai Ambani Foundation for over a decade now. She hopes to employ the Reliance philosophy of size and scale in her social enterprise. Let's get up close and personal with Neeta Ambani. India's most chronicled entrepreneur, Dhirubhai Ambani, believed in the power of opportunity. This vision has driven the Dhirubhai Ambani Foundation to share the gift of knowledge and provide quality education. The Dhirubhai Ambani International School in the heart of Mumbai is a testament of the Foundation's commitment to fire the imagination of young Indians. And it was Neeta Ambani who decided to turn her father-in-law's dream into brick and mortar reality. Neeta Ambani, thank you very much for speaking to us on CNBC TV 18. We're sitting here at the Dhirubhai Ambani International School in the heart of Bandra Kurla. Now, this was your vision. This was something that you've been passionate and committed about for the longest time. Three or four years now that it's been operational, are you satisfied with where you've come? I think I'm very happy that we have been able to demonstrate that we can create a model of excellence. Uh, this school is an international school but very deeply embedded in Indian culture and heritage. What's been the biggest challenge really for you to set everything up? Because in India it's never easy and especially when it comes to education, the government is still so hands-on. Regulatory clearances are a problem, infrastructure is a problem. For you, what's been the biggest learning uh, from this entire experience and what's been the biggest challenge as well? I think my biggest learning is to buy in people. I think to take people together is extremely important when you conceive an idea. And um, I think my biggest learning has been to be very patient. And that's what, that's what happens when you deal with children 24-7, right? Absolutely. There's no other way out of it. Nothing. <laughs> well, clearly you enjoy this process because I believe you spend, what, three days a week here at the Dhirubhai Ambani International I School? I do, I do. And what, look after just about everything, oversee everything? You're pretty hands-on. I am. And I enjoy my interaction with the children here, with the teachers here. Also, I'm kind of kind of a good learner. Mm. I learn a lot when I interact with all the kids here. Is there a generation gap? Now this is the MTV and the iPod generation. Do you feel there's a generation gap here? That, and and what, what, what do you sort of learn from this generation in that oh, sense? Oh, at, at this moment, all of them are trying to make me IT savvy. I'm quite bad at it. And I think they've taken it upon themselves to kind of get me and load me with this information which I'm trying to learn. So uh, have you picked up an iPod and a laptop and all of that? A or laptop, an <laughs> iPod and the works, the pen drive. <laughs> okay. So you managed to operate a pen drive <laughs> as well. Absolutely. So this is, this is the one school that you have here in Bombay. Are there any plans to expand, to take this forward, to take this into other cities and so on and so forth? We actually um, at Reliance now educate 15,000 kids and this is the only metro school. Others, most of the other schools are in Patal Ganga, Jamnagar, Hazira, etc. But yes, for me it is a big challenge to have our rural hubs kind of develop a model of um, primary education, schooling. I think education, especially school education has been my focus. So if I could um, in the retail hubs develop a model which is not competing but complementary to the existing models. Is, is there something that's on the drawing board already? Have you sort of worked out some sort of a, of a formula of how it's actually going to work and when you hope to start all of this off? I think we will be starting rolling out by the end of this year. While the Dhirubhai Ambani International School is the playground for Mumbai's privileged, it also opens its classrooms to the less fortunate. Partnering NGOs like Akanksha and Pratham, the foundation provides education free of cost to hundreds of children. It's uh, wonderful to see this, these kids trooping in at 3 o'clock once this, this school gets over, using our same classrooms, the same in infrastructure. Um, besides Akansha, there's also Pratham. Uh, how do you scale this up is something I would be kind of working on. I have a team already working on this. 
and uh, that would be something very interesting. There's a debate raging on corporate social responsibility, not just in India, but more so globally, where CSR has really existed uh, as a model for much longer. And a lot of the skeptics say that it's 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 a company's way of buying goodwill, it's a company's way of branding itself more conveniently, and so on and so forth. But where do you stand on, on that debate, and how do you see this? I just feel that if good work is being done, let it go on. Why be cynical about it? But are you optimistic that it is going to be something that corporate India, individuals in India are going to look at more seriously? Because if you look at the West, you know, Bill Gates and the Michael Dell and Susan Foundation and people like Warren Buffett, billions of dollars are actually going towards CSR. But in India, we haven't really seen it taking off at so much at this point in time. I think that's a way forward that all companies now are looking at because it's not only the balance sheet and way of numbers that counts for any company. I think it's the other things that the company does that is also very important. But how is it like for you to actually balance the roles that you are playing and to actually you know, come and devote your time here to the school to look at the other uh, things that you are looking at, whether it's Reliance, Retail and so on and so forth. How do you manage to juggle everything around? I think time management is a key. And your, your kids come to this school as well and the right. three of them are studying here. So what's that experience like? Do you manage to sort of, you know, meet them during school hours or is it is it a professional relationship then? Well, it was, I must tell you, it was very difficult in the beginning. I didn't know where to stop being a mother. And, um, but over the years now the kids have realized that there's a line uh, that they draw and even I know that there's some things um, that can happen at home, but at school they're like rest of the kids here. Are you a strict parent? Are you the disciplinarian out of the two of you? And that's what the children tell me. Yeah, yeah. Mukesh was kind of a very easy father. Um, so they can watch as much TV as possible, go out as much as possible, and you're the one who sort of draws the line there? Yeah, it's uh, mainly, I think it's not too much watching the television, but my son can be play football 24-7. <laughs> There's nothing that can get him from the football field and I kind of sometimes say you know it's kind of try to make timetables and work this out but Mukesh is quite easy. Are you winning that battle? Are you losing the battle of trying to get I'm him out? Of I'm getting nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting nowhere. Okay so and what about your daughter because I know you have a very close bond with your daughter she's here at the school as well and and uh, and there's three boys versus the two women in the house so what's that equation like for you? Oh, my daughter is my sounding board, really. Yeah. Um, and she's all for women empowerment. <laughs> <laughs>while education is her first love, Neetha's interests don't end there. The Dhirubhai Ambani Foundation, under her leadership, also works to provide a better life for the communities working around Reliance's mega-projects in Gujarat's Jamnagar district, Patal Ganga in Maharashtra and Hazira. Jamnagar was a challenge that both Papa and Mukesh kind of threw at me. Um, what, what did they say to you when, when Jamnagar happened? And what was your brief in that sense? My brief was, why don't you just go there and see what we are doing? And this was very early when we had just acquired land. And all that I saw was this large barren, arid land, hot, 42 degrees, you know, because I remember I went there in the month of May. And um, when I came back, uh, Mukesh kind of went up to Papa and said, I think Neeta has agreed to kind of look at the township. Huh. I didn't really realize what looking at the township, township meant, <laughs> really. And then one thing led to the other and said, the green belt now, I think, you know, Nita is very interested in doing this. Mm. So that was his way of constantly kind of uh, motivating me, challenging me. But I must say that he told me something um, some many years ago, which kind of I still recollect, is he says, in life you juggle many balls. Mm. Some of them are rubber balls and some of them are glass balls. Yeah. Remember, when you drop the rubber ball, it will bounce back. Yeah. But be careful not to drop the glass balls. So did you at that point in time feel like Jamnagar was, was a glass ball and that you had to really deal with it very, very carefully, very precisely? Uh, with Reliance, I think that's my only anxiety when I work for any of the Reliance uh, initiatives mm -hmm. is that they have high standards of excellence. Mm -hmm. And uh, the time frames are so sharp. I think they're always talking about, I don't think there's ever a time when they say, oh, you can do this in your own time. 
So even when we got married, <laughs> what, what was the story there? <laughs> there was a deadline that you had to follow. You know, we got we met um, in November, and um, you know, I was studying at that time. Mm. So I thought, you know, we kind of meet and talk and kind of. So there was get no married. long drawn courtship. No, we got engaged in December, and then it was supposed to be kind of knowing each other. And by March, we were married. If you, if I had to look back, I didn't know what I was getting into. But I'm so glad that I that did. That you got into it. Absolutely. But what what was it when you first met and when you first started seeing each other? What was it about Mukesh that uh, that drew you to him? That made you want to sort of commit the the rest of your life to him? I think it was not Mukesh's sincerity and honesty that comes across mm -hmm. completely. You know, he's honest in all his dealings. He's completely sincere in what he says. Mm -hmm. And then when I met the family, I realized it's a family of dreamers. Mm -hmm. You know, to dream on is, I think, the and that's the, the school. <laughs> the school also has dare to dream and learn to excel. Huh. And I think I was welcome to the family to dream on also. <laughs> What's the next challenge that he's thrown your way or it hasn't come to you yet? <laughs> I think um, Reliance Retail is going to be large. And if you think about how many people are going to be employed um, and how do we kind of... I think your time is worth it if I can enrich and enhance mm. everybody's um, life. Mm in some way or the other. And the whole Reliance Fresh philosophy was, was pretty much your idea and your baby, wasn't it? It is, and I'm, the collection points and the Reliance Fresh, I think it, is a, it has its own story to tell. Just like um, Jamnagar has its own memories and own little stories. Are story. you happy and satisfied with the way things have panned out for, for Reliance Retail? I am. Yeah? And the, the luxury side of it, is that going to be something that you're going to be looking at as well? You know, that's something my daughter is very excited really? about. She. From a very young age, she started reading the Economic Times. She follows you on television, and she has opinions for everything. Okay, and right now she's giving them on Reliance Retail Luxury, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Absolutely. We are flying 500 feet over Jamnagar's existing Reliance refinery now, including the existing refinery, the new Greenfield refinery coming up, as well as the SEC spread over 10,000 acres. Reliance is going to be developing about 20,000 acres. 7,000 acres have already been developed and that's the existing refinery. As you can see from the pictures, the aerial shots that we're going to be showing you, the green belt, the landscaping of this entire area has been driven by Nita Ambani. Jamnagar's 700-acre sprawling green belt is home to Asia's largest mango plantation in a single location. It even has a sprawling teak plantation spread across 160 acres. Quite an unimaginable site for the arid water-starved state of Gujarat. But Neeta Ambani's never-say-die commitment, coupled with Reliance's vision and money power, has ensured this challenge is a thriving success. We're here in Jamnagar and this, as you said, was one of the challenges that Mukesh threw your way. Now, when you arrived here first, I believe it was, what, 2,000 acres of dry, arid land. Did you think that you would be able to put this together? My first task was actually to do the township mm -hmm. and make people comfortable. And then I moved here onto the green belt. And today, I can't believe it myself. And today when I think and say we're exporting mangoes along with petroleum, and you're actually selling the mangoes at Harrods and many other stores around the world. I believe you were the, the first world. to actually pick up a pack of mangoes from Harrods. Absolutely. I was so excited, nobody could stop me. You know, the Jamnagar mangoes all packed and ready for sale at Harrods. I think it was a moment of great pride. So is this something that, again, like education, you're planning to replicate uh, maybe in the Haryana SEZ, for instance, because this is this is one of your prime uh, you know plants are you planning to do the same elsewhere i think now that we have done a pilot and have been successful it will be easier to replicate and i think environment is a concern for all of us um, reducing emission um, planting trees of course um, using um, other energy uh, like geothermal, solar energy, mm -hmm. because all this helps in against global warming. Sure. 
and so I you've helped change i believe the ecosystem around this area and they've got migratory birds and we have and more rainfall <laughs> i mean oh, when we right. came here we didn't have rainfall imagine thinking of all this when there was no rainfall mm. and last year and year before we were lucky we had rainfall and we had adequate or more than adequate rainfall mm. which has actually changed the whole ecosystem here mm. we have migratory bird the flamingos the um, uh, pelicans um, the wolves the foxes of mm. course we have resident birds like the peacocks and the partridges also mm. but speaking of you know putting all of this together you had two really big crises on the way you had the cyclone you had the earthquake and how did you manage to deal with that and still meet the deadlines and still get on track and put everything up on time when i saw the destruction by the cyclone because we were quite we were one fourth or 50% done and everything was back to ground, ground zero. zero and we had to start all over again but i must say that the spirit of reliance where all of us worked together day and night mm. uh, without thinking uh, whether we are hungry whether it's hot whether it's raining mm. uh, and then the refinery was back on schedule while you put rpl uh, together you also helped during the earthquake and you were involved with the rescue and rehabilitation work in a lot of the villages around in this area what was that experience like for you and do you still associate with a lot of them i think that was one of the most moving experiences in my life to see destruction at such a close level and human misery that is uncomparable is something that has been deeply rooted in my memory and um, i think we were it was the 26th of january and on 27th morning all of us left from jamnagar including me and um, many people from the refinery site we went there nothing could have prepared us for what we saw there but we got to work very fast completely set up communication centers relief rescue operations um and i think we tried to do as much to elevate human misery coming back to nature and i believe your son takes after you and he's quite a nature buff and in fact spends a lot of his time right here in in these orchards oh he is uh, completely a nature um enthusiast um, he spends all his weekends here and he's all of all, 11 all of 11 and he started doing this at a very young age he started coming home um in kaf parade mumbai which is right in the center of yeah. south bombay with birds with broken wings dogs with uh, three legs mm. uh, cats with broken tails and we used to sit and you know kind of um, uh, take look after them eventually we had some 100 roosters at home in seven and the neighbors started complaining because they would kind of wake them up at 4:30 in the morning so now the rooster collection has been added and you've already got some goats as well we have, i believe 40 dogs and we have more than 100 goats and sheep which you will see all over our sites mm. uh, we have all stray dogs are mended and then they never go away from us they all come become a part of anand's family he runs an an animal ambulance at a very young age he started going around moving to find um, animals at those animals on streets those were injured so we thought let's give him an animal ambulance and he takes his role very seriously mm. and i think um, he's growing up uh, into a completely um, uh, child engrossed in nature on your plans the haryana scc are you going to be looking at it anytime soon i know you have a lot on your plate already but maybe maybe a replica of this there god willing i think we should be able to do uh, what we've done here even on our, on our other sites a better ecosystem in place neeta ambani has also focused her attention to improve the lives of the residents of jamnagar providing them with medical facilities like this 24/7 fully operational hospital equipped with mobile medical vans. Apart from healthcare, this civic center with state of the art sports and recreation facilities has been made available to Reliance's staff at its Jamnagar facilities. 
Also in its proximity is the secondary school that offers quality education and an environment of modern schooling for the children of Reliance Industry staff as well as some locals. This is the model that Nita Ambani wants to replicate, not just across Reliance's plants or across Gujarat, but across India. We leave their annual day celebrations here, take a quick commercial break, but when we return, up close and personal with Nita Ambani. But it is here at Reliance's mega refinery complex at Jamnagar that Nita Ambani proves her mettle. Surrounded by steel and concrete, Neetha is as comfortable on site as she is in her plush office in South Mumbai. This new SEZ, which will see Reliance pump in $6 billion, is expected to be ready by the fourth quarter of 2008 and will have a refining capacity of 5,80,000 barrels per day. Neetha Ambani is ready to take on the latest challenge that husband Mukesh has thrown her way. Actually, this is my greatest high, I must tell you. I love this. I love coming on the site. I love doing this. And I can almost now picture what it's going to look like. And I can see you've been furiously making some changes about how you want water bodies moved and how you want the, the rails. roads to be moved. <laughs> you know, it's almost like town planning mm. because what goes on the road, what goes under the roads also is important. And then the buildings and how many people in, out, there are lots of things that they work out, give me the logistics and then we go ahead. You're probably the only woman now, of course I'm the second woman here on site, but you've probably been the only woman on site yeah, most of the has. time. And all of them used to call me sir when I started with, I didn't think they were used to a lady, so you know I kind of used to look whom are they addressing and then I realized it was me and I said can you know, probably you know so some of them now call me ma'am or bhabi, but it was difficult for them too I think. And and you've also then moved on to doing DAKC or now doing Reliance Retail. How different is that? Because that's more sort of urban and you know more corporate in that sense. How different is that as opposed to being here on site with concrete? Um, DAKC, that's the Dhirubhai Ambani Knowledge City, was different because it was only offices. So it was not like this out in the heat with nowhere to go but here. It was also very challenging um, at uh, that time. Mm. But now I find, Shirin, I've just spent a lifetime on construction sites. Um, so right from education to health care and construction, it's where my 10 years have just passed by. So you enjoy this more than that? No, I no. can't. <laughs> <laughs> the equal. You can't choose, ask a mother to choose from her huh. children. So no, I think all of that. I, I enjoy education and health care. But I wouldn't even uh, do away on this you know people wonder what do I like I told you it's for me it's a biggest de-stressor to come here so is this the latest challenge that Mukesh has thrown your way well just keep your fingers crossed <laughs> that this is the only challenge I think with Mukesh I think as I said his vision gets larger challenges get but he can constantly motivates all of us here to give our best Mega dreams, a desire to succeed, commitment, passion and belief. That's Neeta Ambani for you. We hope you enjoyed watching Up Close and Personal with Neeta Ambani. From all of us here on the team, goodbye and thanks for watching.